Hi, Josh. Hi. Can you tell us a few words about you and about the tool you want to show us? Yeah, uh, I'm an engineer on the R&D team at a company called Domino Data Lab. Uh, it's, a, it's a big um, enterprise machine learning platform, but my team uh, focuses on open source tools designed to help uh, kind of individuals and small teams in the data science community. So our mandate is just to build things that are useful. And uh, I want to show you two tools actually today uh, that we've built uh, around a theme. Uh, and that theme is registry ops. And so I'll, I'll introduce that theme and, and show you the tools, but uh, that's the basic overview. Sounds cool. Yeah. Uh, well, let me share my screen and, and uh, you know, do a two minute introduction to our thesis and then, and then show you some tools here. Um, so let me share. Uh, can you see my screen now? You should be seeing a terminal and some slides. I can see it's very... Yeah. So I'm going to present this and then it should be better. Um, so this is our thesis. Uh, basically, you know, it, it starts with something very simple, which is a lot of modern DevOps for, for general software development uh, is based around the Git uh, registry or Git repository as the source of truth. And, and uh, our thesis is that this is not gonna be the future of data science and machine learning. Um, you know, the reasons are relatively simple. Um, firstly, you, you're you working in a notebook and, and when you work in a notebook, a lot of interesting, thing happen, interesting things happen between commits. Uh, but more importantly, uh, you know, data, which is not, you know, properly versioned in a Git uh, registry or Git repository um, is not, is, an, is a crucial part of machine learning, right? And so um, if the data changes, but your code stays the same, your model can completely change. And so clearly just the code is not enough as, as a kind of uh, capturing uh, of the entire state of your project. And then finally, obviously you've got compute and compute can be expensive regardless of whether you're training complex stochastic models like deep neural, uh, you know, deep nets or uh, just doing a very large hyperparameter optimization on relatively simple models. In both cases, the compute is valuable and, and the results of that computation matter. And those are not stored in your, uh, in your Git repository. And so, you know, our theory, our thesis behind this work is that the model registry is gonna become the source of truth uh, for, for data scientists and machine learning engineers. Um, and that's because it captures that tuple of code plus data plus uh, artifacts, as well as obviously the metrics and the parameters that went into training those artifacts. And so, uh, you know, the, then the, the question becomes, what do model registries need to act like uh, Git repositories? And, that, and that's some of the tools that I want to show you today. Great. Yeah. Um, so let me introduce you to two tools. Uh, so I'm going to put this away. And I'll, I'll introduce these just via the kind of the Git repository that, that we're working in. So this is an open source uh, Git repo it and it's storing a collection of tools that all belong around this uh, registry ops theme. And so the two tools I'm gonna to show you today are checkpoints and bridge. Uh, we're also you developing make a the font a bit larger. Sure, let me, let me zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, so uh, is that better? Yes, it's way better. Great. So um, checkpoint adds a pull request uh, to your registry. And so, you know, the idea is if the registry is going to act as the source of truth, then you need to be able to trust whatever model is tagged as production is actually the best model. And to trust that you need some kind of, uh, you know, basic review and authorization and authentication process around who can put things into product into the production tag. And so that's, that's checkpoint. And then bridge is basically continuous deployment for a, a model registry. And so the idea here is in the same way that any good software tool should basically treat the master branch as production. So when you, you know, merge to master, you, roughly speaking, you go through a, a process and then, and then the thing ends up in production. Bridge uh, produces the same process for a model registry. So when a, when a thing is tagged as production, that thing is, ta is, is deployed basically into production. And so the model registry becomes a declarative source of truth for your production infrastructure. Um, and so those are the, the two tools. And um, I think I should just basically launch into it and then, and then let you ask me questions as we go. Does that make sense? Yes, please. Cool. So um, I'm running a MLflow, uh, repos uh, MLflow registry locally. We, we've started with MLflow because we think it's a, you know, a great open source tool. Um, but these tools I want to emphasize are um, not MLflow specific. And so we're actually looking for community guidance and help uh, adapting these to the, to the next you know, N different registries. And we've built them in a way that makes that kind of adaptation relatively easy. But for the sake of, of demonstration, I'm going to show you this integrated with MLflow. So this is basically my local MLflow. 
Um, and what I'm going to do is first show you checkpoint. So uh, if I go to the checkpoint subfolder here, uh, we get a nice readme. Um, and there's actually just one really simple command. So um, I'm going to use this, this command, which is running with a local ML flow, but you can also just use a command pointing at your own ML flow. And so I'm going to you know, copy this Docker command, pop over to a new terminal window and paste it, and then you know, run this command. And so what we're doing here is basically running the checkpoint Docker container pointing at uh, our local ML flow. And the way this works is basically um, proxies your ML flow. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to, instead of navigating to localhost 555, I'm going to navigate to localhost 5000. Um, and we're now seeing ML flow, but you can see there's this little checkpoint addition. And so what's happening here is uh, checkpoint is proxying the ML flow registry. And here's how checkpoint works. Uh, we've currently got version two in production. The latest version is version three. So I, you know, I can pop into version three here and let's say I actually want to uh, deploy this to uh, staging, let's say. So I'm gonna click, uh, I'm gonna change the stage to staging as I normally would. And now yeah. instead of just changing so staging, oh, little yeah, bit, it's very sure. Tiny. Sorry, I'm on a, a high resolution monitor. Um, how's that? That's better. Okay, sorry about that. So uh, now instead of just changing to staging, I get this new promote request screen. And so I can say, you know, I changed the parameters and uh, I click create. And then I get this nice uh, view here, which is basically showing me the, uh, the metrics, the parameters and the description and then this is not particularly interesting because there was nothing currently in staging. So I'm just going to quickly uh, approve this and then show you the next step here. So if I go back to the registry, um, you can see that version three is now in staging. But now let's say this is an in there's now you know an interesting thing to do, which is promote version three to production, right? And so I'll go back into version three. I'm going to go to production. Uh, I'll click OK, and then you know it's like ready for production. So I've done some local testing on staging or whatever, and I'm I'm happy to promote it. Um, my typing is not very good. And then here, now we can see a more interesting thing, right? So now we actually get a diff between the challenger and the champion. And so it looks like I've increased the alpha parameter um, and that has produced a difference in all of the metrics, right? So there's a, a decrease in the mean absolute error, a decrease in the root mean squared error. And so now someone else can come in and look at this and actually make an intelligent decision as to whether to promote this model to production. And so, you know, I'm gonna pretend to be my manager or someone else on my team. I'm gonna say, it looks good to me. I'm gonna approve it. And then if we go back to the registry, we'll see that uh, you know, version three is now in production. So basically what we've added is a pull request to MLflow. Um, and let me, let me pause there and see if you've got any thoughts or questions at this point. Yeah, this is cool. So how do, does MLflow without this look like? Do we have like challengers and champions there? Yeah, so uh, MLflow without this, you know, if I just show you the, the base MLflow, um, basically just has the model. And if I go into the model and select, let's say version two and promote it to production, um, it's just gonna go straight to production. Mm -hmm. So there's no notion of a champion or challenger. It's recording the metrics and the parameters, obviously, which is very useful, but it's not giving you that structured workflow. Um, and then obviously the other really important thing to, to point out is that uh, MLflow by itself does not have any authentication or authorization. Um, so anyone you know, who has access to this URL can basically um, change, like view and change things in your MLflow registry. Uh, I didn't show this in the local mode, but uh, this week we're introducing authentication and authorization to checkpoint. And so you'll be able to actually enforce a login with GitHub or uh, Google or actually Auth0, which provides any authentication uh, and authorization. And then let's say only your team members will be able to view your registry and only certain people will be allowed to approve pull requests uh, or promote requests. And so that's adding an additional layer of, of workflow on top of MLflow that is not present in the open source version. Yeah, that's nice. Because uh, yeah. I think for authentication, if you want to have this, you have to pay data bricks, right? Yeah, and so, uh, you know, obviously that, that makes sense for them. They have to make money, but we're, we're trying to bring that same kind of, um, that same, value to the community uh, without requiring payment. And so that's that's something we're introducing through Checkpoint. Um, so the way it would work is you would, you know, let's say you're running your ML flow on an EC2 instance, it's on port 5,000, you would close off port 5,000 on your EC2 machine, you'd run Checkpoint as a Docker container on the same EC2 uh, or on a different EC2, whatever you prefer. And then um, Checkpoint connects the port 5,000 locally and uh, exposes a public port on 5555 
Um, and then that is where you would access your ML flow and that could be guarded via authentication authorization. Um, so it's pretty useful. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, well, let me let me show you bridge and then maybe we can have a discussion around the whole kind of vision uh, once, once you've seen. So actually you're already seeing a little bit of bridge. Uh, bridge is continuous deployment. And so you can see what's happening here is that bridge has deployed this model uh, at a particular URL, in this case, a local host URL. Um, and so let me show you how that's working. So I'll go back to this, this uh, registry or repository over here. Um, I'll go back to the root. Uh, bridge is just another tool in, inside this. And uh, again, we've just got basically one command. So uh, I'm going to copy this Docker command. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of configuration, which tells it where to look for your ML flow, et cetera, and then, and then how to access your AWS account if necessary. Um, and so if I run this command, which is prepared for me over here, um, we're going to see a couple things happen. So um, what we're now getting is uh, Bridge looking at our MLflow uh, re repository and deploying models. And so if we go to uh, MLflow and let me go through the checkpoint UI just for completeness. Um, so here you point to original MLflow, right? Not to checkpoint. Correct. So yeah. it, it, it can actually be either, right? Checkpoint is a transparent proxy um, for, for MLflow. And so you could point to checkpoint, you could point to MLflow. It actually, it, it doesn't matter. Um, so let me show you version two. So version two is currently in production. And so you can see the URL for version two is production, right? And um, what's happening here is that every time you make a change in the MLflow uh, model registry, um, Bridge is watching those changes and then basically converging the state of a bunch of APIs to match the state of your uh, registry. And so, um, for example, if I go back to here and let's say I want to take version three to staging. So I'm going to push it up to staging. I'm going to get a pull request because that's what you know Checkpoint does. And so uh, we can create this and let me just approve it immediately. Um, so, you know, we can now go back and we should see that version uh, two, sorry, version three is in staging. And then there's going to be a, a short build process, which is happening over here. Uh, it takes, you know, the first time a version is deployed, we have to basically build the environment for that version uh, using the Conda YAML file that's stored by default in, that's in what MLflow. That's doing right now, right? Because I, yeah, so that's, I, that's what's doing. It's actually running. What exactly <laughs> is happening in there? There is a lot of thing going yeah, on. So, it's running in debug on my on my machine right now because I have a environment variable set that puts it into debug mode, uh, which I forgot about. But basically, uh, it's it's currently building the environment, and this takes about twenty to thirty seconds. Um, and once an environment is built for a particular version, it's actually cached, and so uh, you'll you'll see that the next change is is much uh, faster. But so basically, like Docker built or uh, this is a Conda environment build. Mm -hmm. So if you look, let me let me show you the full the full kind of spec here. Every time you save a version into MLflow uh, using the default CLI for MLflow, uh, it saves off this Conda YAML, right? And so you can see there's some dependencies inside a, inside Conda. And so when we deploy the model using Bridge, uh, we're actually using the built-in MLflow serving capability, but we're just doing all of the piping and hard work around coordinating uh, that. And so what we're basically doing is building the Conda environment according to this specification and then running the model inside that Conda environment. Um, and obviously you can customize this when you when you build your models and, and save them in MLflow. But that's a functionality of MLflow that you just uh, depend on. That you Correct, just... we're, we're borrowing that functionality from MLflow. And, and that's actually quite a powerful abstraction because obviously you can put your model into MLflow however they support it, right? So they support multiple flavors, you know, Scikit, H2O, like whatever, you know, they, I think there's like 15 or 20 different frameworks plus different environment specifications. And we just consume those and then transparently deploy them, right? And so if it works with MLflow serving, it'll work with Bridge, basically. Um, so let me, let me show you what's happened here. So if we go to models and we look at version three, uh, we can see it's actually now deployed in localhost uh, in, in staging, right? And so... If I go and query, so here's the, that same URL, but I'm going to switch to staging. Um, and then I, I send a post request there using the standard MLflow serving format. So basically it's a row for each um, kind of 
these are the inputs to the model and I can, I can do multiple rows for multiple inputs, I can get back a response, right? And so what's happened is inside this Docker container that's running in this terminal, um, Bridge is running each of my models as a subprocess. And so this is appropriate for a relatively small amount of models. Um, and it's appropriate uh, maybe for your staging deployment where let's say in, inside a Kubernetes cluster that's using development, you could run the stock container pointed at your MLflow uh, registry. And then um, you could have, you know, all 10 models that are in your, in your MLflow deployed as APIs for, for testing, right? And so uh, that's, that's pretty cool. And so obviously as I uh, update these things, um, you know, as I move this to production, it will then go update the production URL. Um, which is the whole idea of continuous deployment. Oh, that's cool. And uh, apart from localhost, uh, um, uh, yeah. Like, so what are the other options? Basically, right now, if I show you this, we've got localhost, and then we built uh, SageMaker as a deployment target. And so the idea here is that instead of deploying inside the container, uh, Bridge is basically going to speak to. Um, let me skip this break. Uh, is going to speak to SageMaker and basically deploy your models as SageMaker inference endpoints and obviously keep those endpoints up to date as you make changes. And so um, I can show you what that looks like if you're interested, but we're also, by the way, looking for feedback again here on what other targets would be useful to people. And so we've built it to be flexible and, and really it is as simple as just uh, inside Bridge, inside the deploy folder, we've got basically different uh, adapters, different modules that support different targets. And so if anyone is interested in contributing one of these targets, uh, it, it's, you know, there's just a, a basic class that you inherit from an override, and then you can, you can support that target. Um, and what Bridge is doing is basically doing the hard work of translating changes to the um, MLflow uh, registry into basically a really clean data structure that can be ingested by these uh, modules in order to converge the state of some external or internal uh, deployment of those models. Um, so, you know, this would look like, let me show you what it looks like in my AWS account. Um, I've currently got bridge running on, on a different, uh, MLflow registry. So let me quickly sign in here. Um, so we can go into my sandbox and head over to SageMaker. I think we should be in us East too, correct. And so if we look at inference, um, you'll see that for this model, there is a staging and a production endpoint. And if you drill into one of these things, you'll see that uh, there's a particular model version. So this is version one basically is in the production endpoint. And if I was to promote version two, uh, Bridge would basically do the work of, of updating SageMaker to, to have version two in production. Uh, and obviously that's available then at the same um, URL, right? So we can, we can query it at the same uh, API. Um, so that's that's bridge basically. Yeah, that's cool. I saw that there is a pull request, right? So is uh, it from a contributor or from somebody? Yeah. So actually, this is so. Remember, I was referencing checkpoint is getting authentication authorization. So this is actually um, a, a member of my team uh, who's about to land that that kind of pull request that we've been working on for for a couple of weeks now. Um, and so these are under active development. We've, you know, we've got a small community and we're really trying to grow it. And so we welcome uh, pull requests or contributions to add features to Checkpoint, add deploy targets to Bridge, um, you know, wh whatever is interesting to people in the community. Yeah, so how can people contribute? Uh, well, two ways. Firstly, uh, we've got a Slack channel, uh, which is available, for example, uh, if you've got a Bridge, I'll... I'll Give you this link and maybe you can include it but um you can reach out to us on our community slack um so this just opened but basically we've got a community slack that you can join um and then um if you want to contribute a feature directly please do make a pull request against this repository so it's it's domino data lab uh, slash domino research and these tools are you know they live in this repository and and uh, we we welcome contributions um yeah that's nice. And how many people are working on this? Uh, so my team is um, six, excluding myself. Uh, so it's seven people. That includes a designer uh, and some front-end and back-end engineers. Um, 
And so the, the sole mandate of this team is, is really to build things that are useful for individuals uh, and teams in the, in the data science community. It makes Domino uh, smarter as a whole. And so, um, you know, we're, we're really just full-time trying to make these tools as good as they can be. And, and we've got some other exciting things coming down the pipe, um, which I'll, I'll basically tease, but uh, Flare is model monitoring without any capturing of production data. And we've got a really interesting uh, collaborative notebook experience that that we're uh, just starting to develop now, which is going to basically allow you to uh, share data and environments inside a local uh, Jupyter notebook. And so uh, we're we're pretty excited about that. But but basically, watch this space for for those tools to to come out. Um, yeah, I guess I'll have to invite you one more time. <laughs> well, yeah, at least uh, one more time, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least once more. Uh, <laughs> thanks. This was this was fun. Um, let me stop sharing, and, and then we can be yeah. face to face. So, I think you answered. Uh, so, uh, the other question I had was about your plans. I think you partly mm. covered that. Uh, is there anything else you didn't talk about when it comes to your plans? Um, no, I think the you know the one thing we're we're thinking about is um, how to make these tools long lived and useful. And that's why we've, we've made them open source because you know, the, the, thing, the important thing here is these tools will always be open source and, and we really don't have a commercial mandate. And so um, you know, please feel free to check these out and be confident that uh, if you like them, they will always be here. Uh, we're, we're not one of those teams that's gonna just uh, shut these things down. So. Um, that that's just a, something that I feel very passionate about. That they they really are true open source tools. Uh, but I think that's it. Uh, so uh, it was really nice to speak to you, and and I'm I'm happy to have shown you these things. Yeah. Well, before we wrap up, maybe last one last thing. Yeah. Do you have any advice for anyone who is watching this? <laughs> Life advice or machine learning advice? Uh, like, however you feel like. Well, you know, we we speak to. Um, literally at this point, hundreds of, of machine learning engineers. And, and, you know, I'm an engineer myself. And I think the, there is a strong tendency amongst people like us to build everything uh, ourselves because we like thinking of solutions and engineering them. And I think part of where, where and how the space is going to mature is that we're going to converge around certain standards and certain tools. And I think MLflow, for example, is a great example of a open source tool, which is just now good enough that I think we, we can actually maybe start converging around it. And so I'd encourage people to look at what's out there, think about paradigms, you know, choose a paradigm that you think is the best paradigm, but then look for a tool that already exists and contribute to that tool, because uh, we see a tendency to just really, I've seen so many people rebuilding the same continuous deployment system uh, for, for MLflow or for other registries that uh, it's actually a waste of effort. And I think we would be further along as a community if, if people were converging more around um, certain standards. And so, you know, our tools might not be those standards, but uh, I think as, as a whole, we'd be better off if we started to pick them and, and really uh, focus our effort around them. And so that's my advice to anyone operating in the space. Was um, it life advice or machine learning advice? <laughs> uh, in this case, machine learning advice. Uh, life, uh, don't converge around anything. Uh, everyone, should be a <laughs> snow everyone should be a snowflake. Um, <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me today, showing the demo. I'm looking forward to seeing another demo from you, hopefully soon. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And thank you for for giving us a platform. And and I think this is you know the work you're doing is is a crucial part of helping people find the tools to converge around. So uh, keep it up. Yeah. Thanks. Cheers. Goodbye.